Galahad then took the grail back to the Holy Land, to the mythic country of Saras. What was this Saras? It was not told. In Antioch, Syria, in 1910, an ancient silver chalice was unearthed beneath a thousand years of rubble. Scholars traced the progress of the chalice through secret deals to Paris. It was then sold to the Cloisters Museum in New York, where it is now kept under top security. It was recently discovered that the outer cup of gold encloses a fragile inner cup of pure silver. This new evidence led several top historians to pose the question, is the inner chalice, the Holy Grail, found at last? The Antioch chalice, kept in the Cloisters Museum in New York, was for a time thought to be the Holy Grail. Religious historians speculated that the outer gold cage was a reliquary, fabricated to hold and protect the inner silver cup. The chalice is obviously very old and in a fragile state of preservation. The silver is as thin and as delicate as tissue paper. The authenticity of the chalice has been researched by the curator of the Metropolitan Museum, Margaret Fraser. The great impression that this cup made uh, inspired and the dating of it in the first century uh, within shortly after the death of Christ conjured up the idea that this was the cup from which Christ drank at the Last Supper. More recently we have looked at the cup with the eye to the style of the figures to the way the grapevine is ordered on the cup and found that there's no way that you can put it in the first century. It simply doesn't have the same style as first century work. Much more, it responds to works from the fourth, even as late as the sixth century. And is it likely that Christ used the silver cup? It seems highly unlikely. He and his apostles espoused the simple life, the giving to the poor as opposed to the rich. And silver was a very valuable commodity. To make it into tableware was only the privilege of the rich. It's inconceivable to me that Christ had a silver cup. Rather, cups of normal materials that we use, glass, pottery, or wood. Most scholars now agree, not the Holy Grail. The church has never officially recognized the Holy Grail as a relic. Many parts of the legends indicate the grail was not a cup at all, but something much more mysterious. As a Christian legend, the grail quest is very strangely convoluted. There is, however, a pre-Christian version of the story which takes us back 2,000 years before Christ, a version long lost in the mists of time, until a recent amazing breakthrough. Glastonbury, England, has many links to the old stories. Joseph of Arimathea is said to have hidden the grail at the bottom of Chalice Well, a natural spring of red-tinged waters. The awesome ruins of Glastonbury Abbey mark the spot where Joseph built the first Christian church in England. King Arthur was supposedly buried here. Many Christian cathedrals are constructed over the sites of ancient pagan temples. Similarly, many Christian legends are retellings of earlier pagan myths. Just as we can excavate under church foundations, is it possible to discover, hidden in the Christian stories, traces of an earlier religion? Geoffrey Ash is the world's foremost Arthurian scholar. He's published 16 books on the quest of the Holy Grail. It's usually thought of as the cup or chalice used by Christ at the Last Supper. But if we go back to earlier versions, we find that it seems to be a sort of magical pagan cauldron of plenty, not a Christian thing at all. It doesn't appear alone. It appears with other things, with a lance that drips blood, with a sword, uh, with a dish that sometimes has a severed head on it. These are called the Grail Hallows, and they all add to the mystery. 
Is it possible to rediscover the lost pagan story of the Grail? Near Glastonbury Abbey is a very strange mound, 500 feet high and 2,000 feet long. Glastonbury Tor. The most uncanny aspects of this famous landmark are the obviously man-made terraces cut deep into the sides, still visible after 4,000 years of erosion. Some years ago, uh, an Irishman, Geoffrey Russell, put forward a rather interesting theory that these are the remains of a prehistoric maze which was cut in the hill for some ritual purpose thousands of years ago and that people used to spiral up it by a long, long, complicated circuit going round seven times up and down and round and back and he suggested that this was the origin of the whole idea of the quest of the Grail that people came here to thread a maze to some sort of initiation, ritual, mystical experience when they finally got to the center. I live by the Tor, uh, but I had never really gone into it until a year or so ago. So I spent a very hot afternoon going, walking round and round the Tor, seeing whether Russell's maze worked, and I thought it did. And I went on trying all through that summer until I was pretty well satisfied that I had the whole pattern great satisfaction in finding that it did seem to work. There is one really heartbreaking bit where you very nearly get to the top, but you aren't allowed to go there. You have to go down and make another circuit, and down and make another circuit, and then you are finally allowed to go to the top. I think perhaps this is part of the secret of the whole thing. Perhaps there was a, a kind of lesson is there any other evidence which could corroborate such a radical theory that the quest for the Holy Grail was an ancient pagan ceremony inside a giant maze? The answer? A surprising confirmation. At Tintagel, where legendary Arthur was born, ruins of a Saxon fortress still stand guard over the Cornish coast. Pre-Roman ruins have been found beneath the foundations of the fortress. Ruins which date to the time of the ancient megalith builders in Britain, the time of Stonehenge. In a hidden valley beneath Tintagel, Geoffrey Ashe noticed a rock carving from the same era. As a double maze, this is the Mother Earth symbol of a long forgotten religion. The same sevenfold spiral has been found in ancient Crete, Pompeii, and as far away as the Hopi Indian lands in America. No one had noticed any similarity between a small circular rock carving and a 2,000 foot long hill until Ash obtained aerial photographs of the Glastonbury Tor. At first, he couldn't believe his eyes. He checked and rechecked his diagrams, counting terraces noting all the turns and convolutions. The Tintagel rock maze leads in, out, in, out, and in to the center. The Glastonbury Tor maze, although stretched to fit the original hill, leads up, down, up, down, and up to the center. The patterns are exactly the same. When Ash published his findings, a band of modern-day druids organized the first threading of the maze in 4,000 years. Strangely, they have been instinctively drawn to repeat again and again this ritual on the tour. For the first time, we have an insight into an ancient pagan rite. archaeological dig could corroborate this theory that the maze on Glastonbury Tor was the original quest for the Holy Grail. If so, the nature of the Grail itself, the prize at the center of the maze, is still open to speculation. From ancient times through the Christian era, Modern scholars still regard the Holy Grail 
as one of the great unsolved mysteries. What was the Holy Grail? In the earliest known accounts, it was described as a saucer-shaped vessel which fell from heaven. The roots of the word grail mean crater. Were the Christian legends built upon pagan myths, dim memories of something ancient and alien, still buried under Glastonbury Tor? Perhaps.